Another important part in financial feasibility analysis is estimated earnings. A realistic view of earnings should be taken into consideration. A crystal clear potential earnings forecast must be made keeping in view the current and future demand of product or services being offered by the entrepreneur. The financial results should be nearest to the actual sales and transactions in order to see the estimated earnings. You know, for any organization, finance plays a pivotal role. And in that, the cost estimations, the earnings, the uh, cash flows, they all are very important. So while we are making our estimates about the earnings, it has been observed that m initially most of the entrepreneurs are optimistic and they don't look at the other side or the black side of the picture. They only see that this, this, this would be their earning. They don't realize that this is not potential earning. This is something they are only thinking about. So they must be very clear about the actual earnings or when they make forecast, the forecast should be nearer to the actual earning. It's not that I just make a vague idea that X number of people will come and uh, they will purchase my product, whereas in fact, we don't have those X number of people. There may be Y number of people who are going to purchase our products. So the demand of product or services being offered should be very clearly estimated depending on the nearest to actual sales and transactions. Then we talk about the time out of cash. You know, it is also very, very important that generally observe that many businesses, almost 80% run out of cash in a short while, while after initiating a business, not even able to reach a break even point. And no should estimate total cash it will need to sustain a business until it reaches the break-even level. The estimate must be less than optimistic scenario because there are a number of unseen costs and delays in the startup of a business. So cash estimates should be very, very clear and cash inflows and cash outflows must be taken into consideration while you start a business. And at least for the next three to four years, you have sufficient cash available to run the processes. Another important point in financial feasibility is return on investment. One simple measure is the rate of return on capital invested. It is calculated by dividing total estimated earnings by the total amount of investment in the business. So we need to know that what is the actual percentage or rate at which we'll get uh, our investment back or what will be the rate at which the return on investment will be done. Then we talk about the entrepreneur's feasibility analysis. The question is, is this right idea for me? Whenever we are making self-assessment as an entrepreneur, we should keep in mind that what is the self-concept? Who am I? How I will deal with people? What about my self-knowledge? What is the self-esteem? Am I a social self? You know, these questions, these things are very, very important while an entrepreneur is making his self or her self-assessment. Because your self-concept, your 
knowing of product and your uh, services and your social dealing with people your knowledge about the product your self esteem these people like motivation they play a vital role in right. your life while you are analyzing yourself you can see that developing entrepreneur capacity of learners this is important because you have to first of all know the policy and strategies which you will be using you must know your resources you must know the support from the carriers the startup supports like who is going to support you what type of team you have then assessment and recognition that who will be where and what are the skills and knowledge this person has so that he can be given a specific task and of course as a recognition should be given some sort of reward or monetary uh, gains or benefits then governance and partnerships these are also very important for your entrepreneur feasibility analysis because you are making self analysis that how you are going to govern the whole business how you are going to manage it who will be your partners how you will deal with the partners then an other very important factor is the teaching and here we are talking about like a uh, new college for example so we say that the supporting teachers training and teaching are also very important how do you train your staff how your staff deals with the things so they must be well trained for it then since we are talking about the college here so the curriculum at pedagogies should be clear that what curriculum you are going to teach how you are going to teach it what methodologies you are going to use then we say learning modes beyond formal curricula that is apart from your formal curricula what else or what other methods and technology and methodologies or models you are going to use in order to improve your overall self developing and testing a business model another very important factor is how you develop and test a business model osterwald and pegner identified the common elements that successfully entrepreneurs and investor use when developing and evaluating a business model there are nine elements identified by osterwalder and pigneur number 1 customer segment number 2 value proposition number 3 customer shape four channels five key activities six key resources seven key partners eight revenue streams and last is cost structure let's start with customer segment the first step is to identify a segment of customers who have a clearly defined demand for your goods and services unless you have a clear cut customer segment available and known to you you cannot start your business or cannot develop a business model value proposition means the value is the collection of products and or services the business will offer to meet the needs of the customer that means do we have the product which is specifically precisely wanted by the customer are we in position to meet the needs of the customer this is also very important part of your business model customer relationship we say that a strong customer relationship for example after sales services for example door to door delivery and pickup services 
you know these customer relation services are very important because if you can get hold of your customer in a long run the customer will create other customers for you for example he or she will talk to their family their friends and other people around them that this company is providing good product they have a good customer relationship you know there are many new businesses which fail because of poor customer relationship channels are definitely important in a business model that means you need to have communication channels that is promotion and advertising and distribution channel that means product placement these channels play a very important part because through communication channel you promote and you advertise your product but on the other hand if you have not distributed your product well you have not placed it well which is convenient to the customer or customer can easily purchase it or pick it then you will have problem so what many companies do they make a distribution channel with the big stores supermarkets and other uh, stores to sell their products they maybe offer them sometimes good discounts so that this company this store makes a good commission on selling the products of this company key activities of course what important things are entrepreneur must do to ensure a successful launch and to sustain the growth of business we must understand that what is important that is what are the key activities what are we doing where are we standing what are our ideas what products we are producing how these products are going to solve the customers problem how this is good for the community and the society at a bigger level and how people will welcome this all this depends on your activities then we talk about the key resources key resources means we are here talking about the human resource capital resource intellectual re resource to make a business successful we need to have good well trained skillful human resource with us whether we are talking about the labor force or we are talking about the managerial level people then capital resource of course we must have good funding available is for a smooth running of business when we say intellectual resources and in intellectual resources the copyrights the patents and the trademarks trade dress all these things are also important key partners this segment of business model includes main suppliers key outsourcing partners investor industry suppliers advisor all external entities or businesses which are critical to make the business model work the eighth point is revenue stream how will the entrepreneur generate revenue will it be a one time sale ongoing fees advertising or some other source of cash flow into the business the revenue streams information serves as a framework for the more detailed revenue forecast developed from the business plan so you must understand that revenue is streams are important you must know that how will you generate revenue how you will have a uh, funds raising scheme will you charge your customer once or will you have something like ongoing fees for your service or product how you are advertising your product and how much revenue you generate through advertising so cash flows are very important then we talk about the cost structure of course the fixed and variable costs are necessary to make the business model work 
the cost structure of a business model becomes the framework for developing more detailed costs which the entrepreneur must incorporate into the financial forecast of the business plan that means you try to reduce costs whenever wherever possible without uh, compromising on the quality of the product and on the other side the cost should be reduced and on the other side you must look at the margin of profit which you will increase through reducing cost now talk about the business model process it's a four phase process phase number 1 says that develop the business model the canvas that means you make a picture of your business model and then you test the value proposition with the customers you find out from the customers what are their review about the product you have made or the service they, you are giving after testing with the value proposition with customer you test the product with prototype or minimal viable product that means a small production is being done samples are being made and then these samples are further used with the potential customers so that these customers give you their feedback the last is the pivot business model ready to expand you know when you start your business at certain stage you have to make some arrangements and some changes or amendments as required there are three major types of pivots number one product pivot the features that make up a product may not match the customers want so there is a need to review features as customers requirement make small changes and then place it for the customers use sometimes rather than product pivot we need customer pivot that means although the product is needed in the market but the entrepreneur hits an incorrect customer segments like you have made something for young ladies and you are trying in a market where the demand for kids is more important and people are like looking for kids wear so you have to change your market you have to see that who are your actual customers so change your customers market change your customer segment here you will be able to like uh, without making any changes in your features you will be able to change the market according to the requirements and you get your actual required points or required customers revenue model pivot it is important to know the revenue requirement do you need to go for high margin low volume product or low margin high volume product it is very important that you must know that where your product stands is your product meant for elites high margin where you can make good margin but you will be selling less number or lo low volume of product or you need to hit a market where you want to sell it at a low margin with low price but you are targeting more transaction you want to increase the volume of business 